Time to talk about the best and worst gear from the year of 2021. My go-to items that I've enjoyed the most on my backpacking trips this year, as well as a couple items that have been less than ideal or just have not enjoyed as much. Without delaying any further, let's talk about item number one. A favorite piece of gear from this year is the Tarp Tent Double Rainbow Lithium. Zero regrets in making the purchase of this shelter. I love it. It has just served me super well for two main reasons. Really good living space for uh, what it is and the design that it is. And second, it saves me a ton of weight in my backpacking system compared to other shelters that I have here behind me. And a third reason is uh, it just allows me to pitch in so many different kinds of locations that uh, it doesn't really limit me. Tarp Tent Double Rainbow, absolutely worth the investment and no regrets. The next piece of gear we're gonna talk about should come of no surprise to you guys. You see me talk about the Zolio satellite communication device many, many times. I love Zolio, I love how reliable this satellite communicator is. I love what it provides in terms of my uh, trip planning and how it functions in my trips and just the ability for me to communicate with my wife and friends and other family members when I'm out in the backcountry. I used to be the kind of person who was like, ah, I don't need to communicate at all, but now that I have this and I've been using it for over two years at this point, I freaking love it. It's so, so nice and absolutely recommend the Zolio Satellite Communicator. I've not shared much about this pair of shoes here, but this is the Danner uh, Trail 2650. And I've been using these uh, as my primary hiking shoe for this entire year. I moved away from La Sportiva. And if you watch the channel, you know that for a really long time, like over a decade, I've been wearing La Sportiva Trail Runners as my hiking shoe. And the Danner was something that I really, really wanted to try this year. So uh, I put it to the test and I gotta say, these are amazing. I've been so, so happy with their performance, with the way that they fit my foot and they don't have a really high uh, millimeter drop or rise on the heel. I think it's about six millimeter, but I've still got plenty of space in the toe box without it being too wide for my really narrow feet that I have. The Vibram sole has been awesome. Just a really nice shoe that uh, I should share a review on at some point, but know that I have loved, loved the Danner Trail 2650 shoes this year. Should we talk about my first worst piece of gear this year? Well, this should also come of no surprise as the worst uh, piece of gear or a worst piece of gear that I've used this year, the Sawyer Micro. Now, let me just explain this here for a second. This hasn't failed me necessarily, and that's not why it has been put on the list as a less than ideal or worst piece of gear for 2021 because I do enjoy this filter. I've been using it ever since it came out. It's never failed me in the sense that it stopped uh, running water through it and that kind of thing. But I just think that there are better filters out there on the market than the Sawyer uh, Micro. I mean, the Sawyer Squeeze has more volume to it and that volume does allow for faster flow rates. And for what this is, I just think that there are better options in the same price range out there that uh, would warrant not using this particular water filter. And so the next piece of gear that I've enjoyed and loved for a very short period of time, but I gotta say, like I'm impressed, is the Platypus Quick Draw Hollow Fiber Water Filter. I had used this all the way uh, through October this year as my primary filter and then replaced it with the Platypus Quick Draw. I didn't even make it to the end of the year. That just tells you how much I wanted to move away from this and try something different because I knew that there are just better options out there. So the Platypus Quick Draw, you've got really cool function with this. I like how rugged and robust there's water coming out of it. It feels, I love the ability to uh, thread a bottle on the inside or my Knock uh, water bag. And just, you know, it's a fantastic option for a water filter. And speaking of Knock, let's talk about the Vecto. 
because this is the next item on the worst list. <laughs> I kind of feel bad about this because if I'm being totally frank and honest, I love the Vecto. I think it's a great water bag. I love the opening system on it. I've not found anything quite uh, to compete with this opening system and the ease of using it as a water bag compared to other options out there. But I just keep going back to this. But my issue with the Canuck Vecto is I feel like they're disposable. And I've had several of them either uh, get pinhole leaks in them or completely fail. And it's kind of frustrating when you uh, spend, I don't know, 20 bucks on a bag and it's touted to be really, really high quality, but then you end up with pinhole leaks and uh, ultimately failures in it. And so I would like to see Canuck put a little bit more effort into maybe upping the overall quality and the longevity of the lifespan of these bags. Otherwise, they're fantastic and uh, I'm gonna keep using them <laughs> even though uh, I've deemed them as a worst piece of gear for uh, 2021. Let's move on to a backpack and the backpack that I have loved so much this year in 2021 is the Waymark Gear Mile. Now, I'll be completely honest with you, you guys know that I work for Waymark but part of the reason that I love this pack so much is the fact that I personally got the opportunity essentially add my input in design features and aspects that we wanted out of this small overnight ultralight pack or day pack. The mile has been my go-to day pack for hiking with my kids and my wife this year and even on personal uh, like solo hiking trips. I've got three <laughs> of these Waymark miles. This is a custom prototype uh, that was uh, put together by me um, before we released it. And then this is more of a production model here with the cool new eco pack material. But I've got three of these mile backpacks. I use this one for day hiking. I use this one for day hiking. And I've got another one that I use as my daily carry bag to put my laptop and just work stuff in. So I love the Waymark mile. It's just been a fantastic addition to my day pack and pack uh, arsenal uh, that you see here uh, behind me. And I, I love that pack. So the next item I want to talk about is what I'm wearing actually, and that is the Outdoor Research Helium Down hoodie. This thing, I mean, when I look at all of the jackets and insulation pieces that I have to my disposal to use for my backpacking trips, this just is the jacket that I keep going to, that I keep putting into my backpack, that I keep wearing out on my trips. I love it. It's super comfortable. I love the fit. And there, yeah, there are some things that I would change about it. And you can go watch my review of this uh, to know exactly what that is. But it's a fantastic down insulation piece. And I'm just very happy with the performance of it, the weight of it. It's been a great, great option for me to have on my trips this year compared to others that I've used in years past. Speaking of additional insulation pieces, I cannot... Uh, make this video without talking about the Outdoor Vitals Ventus synthetic hoodie or pullover. This thing's incredible. And I, again, with all of the trips that I have gone on this year, this has been my go-to insulation, a lightweight insulation piece to use as a mid-layer, active layer. And uh, there is one thing that I would change on the Ventus and I would uh, extend the length of the zipper here to make getting it on and off a little bit easier uh, for the couple grams of weight that that would add to it. But this is an absolute home run of a product and insulation piece uh, that Outdoor Vitals released this year. I'm glad that I spent my money on this and backed the Kickstarter for it. And uh, that was a worthwhile investment for me. Um, and I've just really, really enjoyed the Ventus. We've got the Sea to Summit Etherlite XT. Of all of the sleeping pads that I've used this year, this takes the cake. I <laughs> have been super, super happy with the way that this has performed, the comfort level, and uh, no, it's not the lightest sleeping pad out there on the market, 
but this has provided me the most comfortable and enjoyable nights of sleep that I've had in the backcountry this year. And I've used other pads this year as well. The uh, Big Agnes Q-Core SLX, the Nemo Tensor, to name a couple, but this seriously takes the cake and just very, very happy with the performance of this and coupling it with my favorite sleeping bag that I've used this year. But this is the Sea to Summit Spark 4 sleeping bag. Now this comes in several different iterations or uh, degree ratings. This is the uh, five degree rating and so I've used this primarily in the shoulder season for colder temperatures and I've had at least a dozen nights in it this year alone, maybe more, but I love, love this bag. It's expensive, I'll tell you that right up front, but I've been so impressed with the way that it has functioned and just gave me some really comfortable nights of sleep this year in the backcountry. And I'm, yes, there are things that I would change about it. The zipper is kind of frustrating when it's totally zipped up. I'll talk about this in a review that's coming out soon on this particular bag. One more item to talk about and to end this video is talk about a shelter that fits the worst gear of 2021. And I don't even have it here on the table to share with you guys. I'll run some B-roll here, but that is the Big Agnes Fly Creek uh, 2 solution die that I had used for a few trips this year. And I don't have it here with me because I sold it because I did not enjoy it at all. There are some major flaws with the design of that particular tent, in my opinion. <laughs> I didn't see a need to use something that didn't perform in uh, strong winds and gusty winds. That was my biggest issue with it. It just did not function well in that setting. And when you've got something like this with two doors, two vestibules that uh, is way lighter and you don't have that front entry issue and struggle that you get with the Fly Creek, that's just a better option. So got rid of it, did not enjoy that tent and uh, do not recommend the Fly Creek. Uh, solution die from Big Agnes. That is my best and worst gear from 2021. I'm curious your thoughts on this list of items here and uh, if you agree or disagree and what are some of your favorite and not so favorite pieces of gear from 2021 that you have used uh, this year. So uh, with that, thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed, you guys know what to do. Hope you have an awesome uh, day, week, year coming up and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. See you later.